Welcome back to the fantasy. Thanks for checking out another of the series where I come up with stuff and I draw that stuff. I take popular songs that you love and I connect them to popular characters that you love. If it doesn't fit, we make it fit. This creates a very unique type of storytelling. Now I'm new at painting, let alone painting on Photoshop, learning new techniques, so if you see me struggling a little bit in this one, mm, just don't mind it. It'll come up later in the video. Pay attention. So here we go. To understand what's happening in this picture, we have to cover some things first, such as the personalities of Ryuko and Senketsu. Secondly, we will go over a brief history of the situation due to the fact that this fan fiction fits into the Kill a Kill universe as is. That's right, no alternate timeline needed for this mashup, that being Kill a Kill and the popular song No by Megan Trainer. We also must have a basic understanding of a coma and what is going on physically and mentally during that time. We'll touch on why the coma is important later. I'm only going to go over what is essential to the drawing and its purpose, so I may leave some things out. However, there are spoilers ahead. You've been warned. With that said, let's dive in. Ryuko has a very fierce personality. She is stubborn and has very little fear. In this series of Kill a Kill, she is direct and disrespectful towards those who she feels wronged her. Though fierce and strong, Ryuko is somewhat self-conscious about her body, but quickly learns to embrace the revealing form of the life fiber clothing, which is necessary to synchronize with Senketsu. Senketsu is a sentient article of clothing made entirely of life fibers. To stay active in battle, Senketsu needs to feed on Ryuko's blood for power. Throughout the anime, he is analytical and composed for the most part. He's constantly observing the battlefield and their opponents to devise the next working strategy. He also monitors Ryuko's blood levels and will warn her when low. Despite being an article of clothing, Senketsu soon shows affection towards Ryuko. It can be argued it is a kind of fatherly love. Only Ryuko can hear his voice. That causes a sentimental attachment between the two. But it doesn't last when a devastating truth is revealed in episode 18. Before we can understand what's happening in the drawing, we must look back at what previously happened. The Academy made preparations for a festival to celebrate Ragio visiting the school. FYI, Ragio is in the board of directors, so it's a big deal. Yeah. However, it is not a celebration but an experiment. Something about fusing life fibers with human DNA or something crazy like that, it doesn't matter, we don't care. Ryuko and nudist beach soldiers arrive at the stadium and a huge battle erupts to save all of mankind. Someone gets their head chopped off but survives. Someone gets beat and stripped and naked. Uh, Junketsu, the other Kamui, is stolen and blah blah blah, stuff, crazy stuff happens. The next part though is very important. Towards the end of the battle, Ragio powers up Junketsu and rips Ryuko's heart right out of her chest, literally. This reveals her to be fused with life fibers, proving the experiment 17 years ago was a success. Ryuko is revealed to be both human and life fibers. In a last ditch effort to stage a retreat, knowing they were at a strong disadvantage, Satsuki triggered an explosion. How everyone survives is beyond me. In the anime, everyone blew up. It is this moment where Ryuko ends up in a coma. Okay, stay with me guys. We almost have all the information we need to make sense of the picture and how it connects to the song No by Megan Trainer. According to WebMD, a coma is a prolonged state of unconsciousness. The person is alive and looks like he or she is sleeping. However, unlike a deep sleep, the person cannot be awakened. According to Susan Blackmore, a prof uh, psych professor, patients in a coma do not respond to touch sound or pain and cannot be awakened. Yet many people who have recovered from comas report dreams into which something of the outside world penetrated. Whether they dream or not probably depends on the cause of the coma. For the sake of this scenario, we will assume Ryuko has a very special coma case. The point that matters is the fact that Ryuko has this one particular dream while she is unconscious during the time span between the stadium battle and her rematch with Ragio. Ryuko has a foreboding dream that at its surface seems harmless. She finds herself in a club sitting at a bar top car into the cave side of the nudist beach main base. There's loud music and many people are dancing and enjoying themselves. In reality, her unconscious mind is absorbing the outside noises of the base as it gears up for war against the academy to thwart the covers from taking over the world. After hearing that Ryuko is infused with life fibers, her heart churns inside. Her hostility began when she first found out, but it festers in her sleep. This animosity is revealing itself more and more. Senketsu approaches Ryuko at the bar he looks at her with an eye of intent. With his eye only, he reaches out to her. In reality, the synergistic relationship between them allow them to mentally connect in a sense. Senketsu is waiting for Ryuko to awaken from her sleep. As mentioned above, Senketsu has grown sentimental of her and cares for her well-being. In this vision, it is possible Ryuko would say something along the lines of, I think it's so cute, I think it's so sweet, 
how you let your friends encourage you to try and come to talk to me. But let me stop you there before you speak. Those words being the first lyrics in Megan Trainer's song. In the next verse of the song, Megan continues to write no to an assortment of questions. It happens fast because in many dreams we experience words and moments flash by and at extremely fast paces. Yet we are often able to comprehend all that is happening. This is what's going on in Ryuko's brain at the moment. At this point, Senketsu begins to defend himself and his integrity. Naturally, Ryuko doesn't buy it. We can place the next set of lyrics to this instance being, first you're gonna say you ain't running game, thinking I'm believing every word. Call me beautiful, so original, telling me I'm not like the other girls. She then goes on to talk about how she was in the zone, which fits Ryuko perfectly. She is stubborn, fierce, and direct. At times, she is overconfident in her power. Whatever she wants, she believes she can get it. With all this happening in a few short moments of time, a large amount of information is condensed in this dream state. We can consider the next set of lyrics where Megan addresses other ladies in the area with tips and passive remarks to be Ryuko thinking about the situation. Senketsu is grabbed by the collar. Thank you in advance, she says. Perceiving Senketsu is to be persistent, she becomes a little more hostile and tells him she doesn't want to dance. After all, when Ryuko awakens later, she feels she herself is an inhuman monster and states she will never put him on again. Just looking at him pisses her off. This dream is a point in that road to that state she will be in. This is why the line is mentioned, I don't need your hands all over me. Ryuko is manifesting her irrational anger toward him in this dream. In her denial of the life fibers within her, Ryuko is projecting onto Senketsu. She doesn't feel human and feels betrayed by her own understandings of who she is. Having the same DNA as the transforming clothes makes her feel less human and more monstrous. Diving into the feelings of self-hatred, she projects that hatred onto her once good ally, Senketsu. Psychological projection is a theory in which humans defend themselves against their own unpleasant impulses by denying their existence while attributing them to others. To finish this artwork to completion, we can assume Megan's lyrics match Ryuko's dream state manifestations when it is written, If I want a man, then I'm gonna get a man. Immediately, Ryuko has Junketsu appear on her body. Junketsu is another kamui and belongs to Satsuki, but was stolen by Ragyo in the events described earlier. It was a proof of power on display. Ryuko chose Junketsu as a display of her ability to control any life fiber suit she saw fit at the time of her needing. And with her body enveloped by Junketsu, Senketsu would have no choice but to leave. This moment in her dream was a foreboding warning of her fate. It is in reality that Ryuko will be subdued by Rangio and forced to wear Junketsu. This happens soon after she breaks from her sleep and faces Rangio once again without Senketsu. The song No by Megan Trainer at this point repeats itself and reminds us how quote unquote untouchable she is. We can attach the repetitive dialogue to Ryuko stressing to Senketsu that she is untouchable. By applying her personality laid out from the beginning, this means physically, sexually, and by prowess. When Ryuko wakes up from the coma, she is changed. She goes into battle with only her scissor blade to protect her as the sight of Senketsu pisses her off. Foolishly, Ryuko finds herself matched against Ragyo with nothing to defend herself and gets her mind controlled and her body forced into Junketsu. Things only get worse from there. Maybe next time, we will explore a song and character combination which ends in a lighter tone. Is there a scenario you wish I would have written? Do you have a better one? Is it better than mine? If you do, share it below. I'm just itching to read it. Thanks for watching. Like it, share it, and subscribe it.